All right, I, uh, I used to use a Bible to prop up my iPad, but I haven't read the Bible in years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, love you guys. Good to be with you. It's an honor to be with you. We, we love Pastor Jim and Tara and their family, and we've walked with them for many, many years. I mean, through the desert of Bakersfield, the hell of Las Vegas, and now the promised land of Caneo Valley, right? All right. I'm going to get right to the point because I pastor in San Francisco, and up there you could have an earthquake any minute, and for some of you, you wouldn't go to a good place, so I need to get right into it, all right? I'm just, I love you. Okay. Oh, oh, Jesus, help me. All right. You turn so quickly. All right. I want to talk about uh, just a fascinating subject that I really love, and um, I understand you're in this mind war or mind something series, and... Um, it, you know, our life depends on the kind of thoughts that we nurture. And our thoughts reflect our whole life that we're experiencing. In your mind, if you think about it, you conceive everything that you're going to do, say, and plan. It first starts in your mind. And so I want to talk from a scriptural point of view about life-shaping thoughts. And uh, I recently heard on the radio that it's estimated that over half of the children in the state of California have mental health issues. That's just staggering to me. And I want you to know, I don't come in strength today. We, you know, we have three locations in the Bay Area. We have a 50-acre campus, a school. It's ginormous. Another campus, 12 acres in San Ramon, San Francisco. $200 million in buildings and assets that are all debt-free. It's just staggering what God is doing in San Francisco. Yeah, to God, to God be the glory. But I don't, I don't come in strength. My, my wife, Tracy, this with me, we're, uh, she's been battling multiple sclerosis for 19 years, and in the last three years just has gotten significantly worse. And um, uh, part, part of the time in wheelchair, part of the time not in a wheelchair, our, our youngest son has cerebral palsy, and uh, the pandemic just really affected his mental health. My dad passed away a few months back. Uh, my mom is battling two types of cancer. Uh, this next month in February, I'll be cel celebrating 44 years as being a pastor. 44 years. Yeah. I, I don't know why you clapped. You have no idea whether it was a good 44 or not. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, I, but I, you know, if you're going to be 44 years in the ministry, you really care and love people. And I really love you guys. And I want God to speak to you. And I want to encourage you to look past me and just listen for the word that God has for you, that he would speak to you, amen? amen. So your thoughts have incredible power uh, over your mental, emotional, and physical well-being, and God has a lot to say about that. Your thoughts are the architect of the life that you're building, and thoughts shape your life, and they shape your destiny. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, he said, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts, and so if your thoughts are peaceful and kind and calm, you're going to have that quality of a life. And uh, what we believe becomes our truth. And then our thoughts rule over us based on that. Uh, I'm, again, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, you've either seen the Golden Gate Bridge in pictures or you've driven across it. You've been there. And let's just imagine that one day, one morning, I'm driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. And I believe that my brakes have gone out. I'm going to react. Now imagine in that moment that I get a phone call and it's from a friend of mine. And I go, I can't talk right now. My brakes have went out. Now it would not do me a whole lot of good if in that moment he would just say, just calm down. Jesus is with you, right? Uh, that, that would not work for me. I, I want Jesus behind the wheel, but he's not here right now, right? I'm freaking out. So as long as I believe that my brakes have gone out, I'm going to act like my brakes have gone out. As long as I believe that my brakes have gone out, I'm going to act like my brakes have gone out. Now, if my auto mechanic then calls me, he says, hey, Darren, I have some really, really good news. This morning, I actually checked out your car and your brakes this morning uh, in the shop before you left, and uh, your brakes are fine. Well, if I still believe they're not fine, 
If I still believe that my brakes have gone out, my belief is telling my thoughts, you're going to die. It's really cold water at the bottom of that bridge, you know? It's, it's over for you, Padre, right? This is it. it. My belief in my thoughts will cause me to panic. This is a real moment for me. It's not make-believe. Beliefs and thoughts are what shape the feelings that you have every day. And so if I'm gonna be honest and I believe that God is mad at me or doesn't, I mean, he cares more about them than he does me or I'm not as important, I'm not gonna take prayer as seriously. I'm just not gonna be as interested in prayer because I feel like God's a little indifferent towards me so I feel a little indifferent towards him. If I believe that, that other people are smarter than I am, I'm not gonna speak up in that room, in that meeting. There's other smarter people. Why would I say anything? If I believe that my body is, is awful, I'm gonna stay away from social gatherings. Uh, yesterday, I was working out at Gold's Gym and T.O. and I was on the treadmill and uh, I was 30 minutes into the treadmill when suddenly the treadmill just stopped like unexpectedly. And I, I was planning on going another 45 minutes into the blue zone, and, uh, but it just stops. Well, when it just stopped on me like that, I just believed it was divine intervention. <laughs> I, took, I took the win, man. I just got off like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was incredible, right? And, until I changed the setting on the treadmill, I'm gonna believe that. Until I change my belief and my thoughts about the, my breaks, uh, it's not gonna change the way that I feel on the Golden Gate Bridge. Where your mind goes, so goes your life. And science tells us that, that you can design and sculpt and rewire your brain and your thoughts and, and you may feel like you don't have any power over your life or your circumstances, but you do because God has given each of us this powerful gift, this incredible body and mind and brain that he's given us and he's given us this, this ability to think and feel and choose our thoughts. So here's the challenge that we face. Chad Helmstetter, he wrote this book entitled, uh, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. And he writes, research indicates that as much as 75% of everything that we think is negative, counterproductive, and works against us. I've met very few people in life who don't want to change their life, that don't want to have a great life. Most really want to. And we have good intentions. And we walk with Jesus, but we're, we're still the same version. You know, we came to Christ 10 years ago, and we're still the same version we were 10 years ago. It's like thinking and thoughts and life and circumstances really haven't changed. We really haven't moved the needle in the way that we hoped we would. And the truth is, is that we all struggle at times. We struggle with worry and insecurity and frustration and anger. I do. We all do. We all talk to ourselves. We all carry on conversations with ourselves and our heads. And no, you're not crazy. Well, some of you are, but you know, <laughs> But, but most of our thoughts are rehearsing conversations in our heads. If you think, you're thinking, well, you know, a conversation, ones that we have that we haven't had yet, you know, some conversation that's coming up that I'm about to have, and you're driving down the road, you're driving to the meeting, you're getting ready to make the phone call, you're getting ready to send the email, and you're having a conversation in your head of what you're gonna have, conversations that we wish that we would have with somebody, that we play in our heart and in our mind, and we wish it would go that way. And many of our thoughts have this kind of negative, nuance to them. It doesn't have to be that way. You can change your thoughts. You can learn how to build a foundation of a new and better way of thinking based upon God's word. Are you ready? Yes. Yell, hell yes. <laughs> Come on, yell, hell yes. Okay. I didn't know if you would do it or not. I, could, that just, <laughs> I just wanted to see. That's that's so great. By the way, when you, when you do the announcements and you have the jazz music in the back, that's incredible, I tell you. I was like falling asleep, but it was like the jazz music is going. I thought if we did that in San Francisco, everybody start ordering drinks, you know? Here's something you're gonna wanna know. Every time that you have a thought, this is true, science. It triggers electromagnetic reaction in your body, whether you're aware of it or not. In other words, you have a thought, there's an automatic, the way God designed us, there's an automatic chemical surge through your body with every single thought that you have. Now think about that. 
Those thoughts then set off emotions, and when we listen to those thoughts, they create the emotions, and then we act upon them. For example, if you feel fearful in a moment, or you feel worried in your emotions, you, you may withdraw because you're, you're, you feel self-protective, or you might go, no, I got to lash out, or other thoughts you, uh, you might be feel-good chemicals that you have, like when, when you yelled, hell yes, in church, and you got away with it. For some of you, that felt really good. You're just a bad boy or girl. And that just felt really good to yell, hell yes, in church. And it felt good, right? I get feel-good chemicals when I watch uh, Hallmark movies. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm a grown man. I'm bigger than most of you. And I watch Hallmark movies, and now the Great American Family Channel, it's pretty cool. But I love the opening scenes of the movie where they have the opening aerial scenes, and it's like this small, quaint, rural little town like we have all in Northern California. And it's this beautiful little town in the valley, and and it it, it zooms down onto Main Street, and the, the leaves are turning autumn colors, and it's just beautiful. And I have, and if the soundtrack is really good, I have this I have this rush of feel-good chemicals. You know what I'm saying? And, and then I love that, that everyone lives on a ranch in Montana <laughs> or they own a maple farm. And I'm happy for them. And I'm looking, at, I'm looking at their houses. How do they afford that? Like, that's a nice house. Like, I don't think they make enough. I don't know how that... It's, it's, it's a really nice house. It's like they're all on vacation the whole movie. You know, it's like a great, I'm happy for him, and it releases feel-good chemicals for me. However, some thoughts in life release downer chemicals. Like if you're an L.A. Charger fan, (laughs) wow, are you on a downer. It's just like, whoa. Like, why would you do that? Pick a winner, be a winner, you know? Now, go, yeah, whatever. Uh, now, Now, why is this important? Your thinking determines whether you're happy or sad most of the time. And your body is the reciprocal of every negative thought you have. And it reacts to each one of those thoughts. This is powerful. And how those negative thoughts manifest in your body is unique to you. So for me, when I get stressed, like I'll get a random rash like somewhere on my body. And no, I'm not stressed right now. So quit looking for random rashes. That's so... That's so awkward, right? Okay. On the other hand, if I start laughing, laughing releases feel good. I feel good. I feel good. It releases healing chemicals in your body, throughout your body. The Word of God says in Proverbs 17, it says a cheerful heart is good medicine. Laughter is good medicine to your body, soul, and spirit. But a crushed spirit, a negative spirit, it just dries up the bones. You ever been with somebody that, man, they are such a downer? the way they communicate, the spin they put on stuff. They're so critical. But laughter, it strengthens your immune system. Laughter is healing. It's like medicine to your soul, to your mind and your will and emotions. And so so thoughts create emotions that have this lasting physical effect on your body long after the moment that you just had. Neuroscientist Dr. Caroline Leaf says, research shows that around This is amazing to me. 87% of illness can be attributed to thought life. That's what research says. That's astounding to me. When you think about how truly powerful our thought life is to our mental, physical, and emotional well-being. How many think our world has become more stressful? How many are just stressed that it's an election year? I am. I mean, it's like, oh, what, what crazy people are going to do whatever they're going to do. It's like, all right, how many think we're just a little more anxious, a little more depressed, a little more angry, a little more violent, a little more hungry? <laughs> that was from me. Sorry. But anyway, that's, I mean, it's like I'm in the second service of three. It's like I'm going to need... Anyway, uh, <laughs> Dr. Caroline Leaf goes on to say 87% of illness can be attributed to thought life and approximately 13% to diet, which I thought it would have been more diet, but 13% to diet, genetics, and environment. Studies conclusively link more chronic diseases to an epidemic of toxic emotions in our culture. 
Those toxic emotions can cause migraines, hypertension, strokes, cancer, skin problems, diabetes, infections, and allergies, just to name a few. Toxic thinking releases downer chemicals that stimulate one another, which then turn and multiply throughout your entire body. Now, the good news is this. If your thinking is healthy, then you're actually releasing healing and health into your body, and your body renews itself. Your self-talk, the way that you talk to yourself, is either giving yourself life or feeding yourself poison. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We're thinking thoughts. We're speaking things out over our life, and every person's brain contains this library full of every thought that you've ever had. It stays with you. The brain is amazing. And so your thought library that you carry around with you is filled with just volumes and volumes of books that tell your story of how you got here today. And the scriptures have a lot to say about our thinking and about our thought life. The words think, thought, and mind are used over 300 times in the Bible. Proverbs 23 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Negative thoughts are like a form of pollution to our body. But it's not just that whether the thought is negative or positive that, that makes it toxic. Sometimes it's our distorted views of the way we look at our world. There's a way that seems right to a person, but in the end, there's destruction. The Bible says that in these days, they'll call good evil and evil good. We're seeing that being played out constantly in our society and in our culture. There's an interesting verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 45. It says, a good man brings good things out of the good that's stored in his heart. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil that's stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The question is, are your thoughts shaping you or are you shaping your thoughts? Now, we're going to get immensely practical, and I want to share four steps to shaping a healthy life. Listen, Jesus, do you think Jesus was healthy? I think so, absolutely. I think his thinking was healthy. And so for those of you that are going, all oh, the religious, like, oh, man, he should use more verses. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. I'm going to use the, I've been using the Bible. I think I've done like four or five verses, and you just slept right through it, okay? So this isn't just psychology, but you know who, who created your brain? It wasn't a trick question. <laughs> Even in San Francisco, they would get that right. <laughs> they don't know who God is. Or, I mean, don't get me started. Step one, take an inventory of my thoughts. Take an inventory of my thoughts. I had a friend, uh, he came home from work one day. His little cute little darling four-year-old little girl was on the front porch and she was sitting there. And, and as he's walking up, she declares, Daddy, I know everything. Really, honey, you know everything? Yes, I know everything. Well, honey, how do you know that you know everything? And she says, well, I've been thinking all day long, and there isn't anything I haven't thought of. <laughs> the truth is, we all start thinking that we know everything at a very young age. And we make decisions based on our thinking. Now, how many of you have thought, somebody in your family, you thought, wow, they just don't make really good decisions. They're thinking, right? Their guidance system isn't that good. But the truth of it is, all of us make mistakes and all of our thinking is broken. We have a broken thinker. <laughs> just made that up. But anyway, we have a broken thinker. I don't know what's gonna happen in the next service. But we have a broken thinker, Right? There's a brokenness in our world, in our view of our world. That's why the Bible says, don't conform any longer to the pattern or the paradigm of this world and its thinking, but be renewed in your mind because the way that you naturally think is not healthy. So we desperately need this. And if we think, oh man, I can go days without the word of God, I can go days without good input because my thinking somehow is just naturally better than everybody else's thinking, that's misguided thinking. That's prideful thinking. Now, I'm aging, not like right in front of you. Well, I guess I am, but I'm aging and I'll admit that. And my, my new goal in life now is that I've decided that I would like to one day become a seniors active adult model for Nike. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm thinking now? Because you're la like, that'll never happen for you, buddy. You know, like, okay, maybe a foot model. 
All right, I'll go, I'll go for that. But like when I say senior adult active, uh, what, what I mean is that sometimes like I'll raise my hands, I admit it, in worship just for the shoulder exercise. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, that feels, that feels, in fact, I'm doing it right now. That's so good. I just, I, I want to stretch. Okay, back to my point. I easily am misled by my own thinking. For example, I'm conflicted right now because I bought these new hokas, right? Anybody, hokas? Tennis shoes, they're all black, they're incredible. And so I've been buying Hoka's even before they were popular, even before anybody knew about them, and at least in my own thinking, I think that. But, but most recently, I bought this pair of black Hoka's, and I, I like them, and so I even ordered a second pair because when I like something, they always run out when you try to go buy it again later. And so they're, they're called Bondi 8 SR. And after I bought them, I, 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 I got, it got me thinking, what does the SR stand for? Did, did I just buy my first pair of senior <laughs> shoes? Does Bondi 8SR stand for seniors? Are, are, are these my first pair of orthopedic shoes? That's so not cool going into Gold's Gym with orthopedic shoes. That's why the treadmill stopped. This guy's going to die. Let's talk, you know, as you get older, you don't even know what you're doing. You know, it's like you carry, I carry Advil and BioFreeze and Tiger Balm in my backpack. I've got a cool looking backpack. I look good on the outside, but on the inside, I've got drugs in there. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. You don't know why you did what you did. And the point is, is that sometimes you don't even know what you're buying. You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're, what you're walking into. You don't know where you parked your car, right? Our own thoughts, our own thinking sometimes fail us. We're broken. We desperately need God. And the scripture says in Jeremiah 10, it says, I know, O Lord, that the way of human beings is not in their control. That mortals, as they walk, cannot direct their steps. And the truth is, is that most toxic thoughts, they just want to stay hidden in the darkness of your mind. Like you really don't want to share those thoughts, those things that are going on. That's why the Bible says that if we confess our faults one to another, that we may be healed. Just be careful who you confess to, right? right? However, when we bring those negative thoughts, those dark thoughts into the light, Wow, something supernatural happens. And here's a practical way to bring thoughts of your head into the light. You can begin to just, you know, you're driving down the road, you, you use Siri or whatever, put it in your notes, a journal, write it down. What thoughts are you thinking? Take a journal inventory of what you're thinking and then start looking for reoccurring negative toxic thinking when you talk about politics, when you talk about money, when you talk about other people. Is there a propensity towards negativity? Are there things in your life? Allow the Holy Spirit to bring it into the light List those voices, those thoughts that have said this and have said that, this, th these, these memories that you have and start taking inventory of what's going on. Remember that influential moment that a parent said this or a coach or somebody in, of influence said something to you and it still stuck with you. Even in this moment, you can remember that moment. I have a friend that he was in middle school in his backyard and his dad hit him in the face punched him in the face. And it wasn't just the assault, it was the words that came afterwards. There may, there may be quotable things in your family that you haven't even thought about that the family always says this, it's a mantra, it's a, it's a viewpoint, it's a cliche that we say over and over again that's really not a healthy viewpoint. List those things, take inventory of the way that you're thinking and then bring them into the light because when you bring it into the light, you see your story as it really is. There are thoughts, thoughts are things that are crossing your mind, but you're not those thoughts. Thoughts, any random bizarre thing. I'm thinking of Chick-fil-A and it's Sunday. Not good. <laughs> that was a random thought. It, I, that was not planned. It just came right across my mind. I'm not responsible. <laughs> Th thoughts just come across, right? Step number two, identify the, th the toxic thoughts from my past. Now imagine this scene. It's after dinner. A small child can barely reach the kitchen sink. It's her night to do the chores. It's her night to do the dishes. She's doing her best to do the dishes. The parent is, the critical parent stands by, hovering by, and the child hears over and over again, 
you're doing it wrong again. That's not how you do it. It's morning time, same household. The child's trying to make their bed, but they're too slow. And the parent with the high expectations, you're too slow, you're not doing it right. The parent finally rips the bedding out of the hands of the small child. And the child hears those familiar words, you just can't get it right. And it's bad enough that the child got beat down over and over and heard those messages all of their life, but it's even worse that they end up carrying that internal critical parent with them into their own new family. And now she's 40 years old and having the same tendencies, the same impatience with her own children, always pointing out what they're not doing right. And their own self-talk is, I'm never quite good enough. I was never quite good enough then. I'm never quite good enough now. Therefore, my children are never quite good enough. Therefore, my spouse is never quite good enough. Nothing's really good enough. My church isn't good enough. My small group isn't good enough. Somebody's always going to disappoint me. They're just not good enough. And we carry that critical mother or father or influential person with us. And when you bring those thoughts and feelings and you carry them into the light of the Holy Spirit. You're letting yourself know, you know what? I, I, I don't longer want to allow these thoughts to shape my life. I mean, I'm like 40 and I'm still going to let that thought shape my life. I'm 50, I'm still going to let that thought shape my life. Paul taught that when you're dealing with unwanted thoughts and all of us have them, he said this in 2 Corinthians. He said, we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. What does Christ say about me? How does Christ feel about me? And you see, we all have these unwanted thoughts. You're not alone. I deal with being like claustrophobic in places. I can tell you crazy stories, and maybe I will someday. But elevator, tunnels, airplanes, it's it's crazy. They're unwanted thoughts that I have to deal with, unwanted points of view. Listen to the check of the Holy Spirit when you have that unwanted thought. When you feel yourself just going there and the negativity and and, and your mind imagining what could go wrong and all these different things, allow the Holy Spirit to check you and to edit your thoughts. Step number three, decide which thoughts will control my life. When negative thoughts come knocking, Learn to choose which thoughts you're going to let in. The world will tell you what to think. The world will tell you how, what to believe about yourself. But you have the power to choose the ruling thought that's going to shape my life. Practice choosing higher thoughts. How do you do that? Isaiah 55, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. And he's saying it to you too. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, that's a big gulf. That's how broken we are. That's how big a difference there is in our thinking versus God's thinking. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Practice choosing a higher thought. The scripture teaches in Philippians 2, verse 5, let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. When I say I want to have the mind of Christ in my everyday life, I want the mind of Christ to rule my mind and my thoughts, that means I want to, I want a Christ-like perspective and attitude about this situation. I want Christ-like priorities and Christ-like values in my life and in my family. Allow the mind of Christ, which is in you, to guide you. The way that Christ would think, the way that Christ would view this. When the negative thought comes, gently move it aside and move towards the love of Jesus in your mind. You know when the moment happens. Choose the higher thought. What are the higher thoughts? Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control. We've been walking with Jesus all these years. They go, man, I'm still not kind. I'm still not gentle. I'm still not patient. What's going on? It's a choice of choosing in that moment. I want to be like Christ. I need you, Jesus. 
I need you to help me. Choose love in this moment and joy in this moment and self, a higher thought in this moment. I'm so used to going to the lower thought. I need to choose a higher thought. Jesus said in John 15, greater love has no one than he, lay down this, some, than he lays his life down for his friends. And then in two verses later, Jesus says this, I have called you my friends. Jesus loves you, so be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Step one, take an inventory of my thoughts. What, how do I really think? I mean, be honest. Step two, identify the toxic thoughts from my past. You remember them, so they're still present. Step three, decide which thoughts will control my life. And step four, choose thoughts that will build the life that I want. Your thoughts are the architect of your life. And the great news is you can change your mind. You do it all the time. You already change your mind. You can replace your thoughts with better thoughts. Romans 12, verse 2. I love this in the Amplified. It says, and do not conform to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. Imagine right now inviting Christ into your thought life. Imagine turning on the light in the darkest places of your mind. That's a powerful thought, actively inviting the light of the world into your mind. The light of the world becoming the light of your mind. In Colossians 3, verse 2, it says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. To set your mind, that means to think, to focus. And the best way is to think and focus on higher thoughts. To set aside time each day in God's word just to renew your mind. To have that Bible reading plan or devotionals or whatever you use, memorizing scripture, you know, just getting the word of God inside of you and working in you every day. Take a spiritual, mental, and emotional bath every day. According to science, it takes us 63 days to change our brain. And one of the ways that we do that is through declarations. It's one of the best tools I know to help us reprogram our thinking. And the scripture teaches us, again, think on this, dwell on this, fix your thoughts on this. Whatsoever things are good and true and pure and noble, think on these things. Okay, how do I do that practically? So here's some of uh, my declarations. And uh, you won't be able to write these down fast enough, but you can check them out again online. Uh, Lord Jesus, I say to you, I say yes to you being the Lord of my thought life. That's a big thing right there, just for you to like say it, pray it. You know what? I say yes to you being the Lord of my thought life. It's not going to just anything goes anymore. Lord, I will allow your light into my darkest thoughts. Lord, uh, I will let you remind me that I am lovable even when my thoughts say otherwise. Lord, I will no longer embrace or project toxic thinking onto myself and others. You know, you start going there, imagining what they're really thinking, imagining what they're really doing, imagining what, what do they really mean behind that text, and we go to this negative place. I'm not going to do that anymore. Lord, have mercy on my thoughts and heal the years of toxic damage that I've carried within me from my past pain. Lord, have, have mercy on my emotions as I learn to be in touch with what I feel, but do not let them shape my reality. Lord, have mercy on my body because you have things for me to do. Lord, because you love us all, help me to have mercy to everyone that I encounter. I want to finish with this story. There's a story from India that's thousands and thousands of years old, and it's about a, a man who was forced to spend a night in a prison cell with a poisonous snake. Any movement, any small stirring, and the snake would strike with a lethal bite. And so the man convinced himself 
the best course of action is I need to get way over here in the corner of my cell, far away from the snake as possible. And I need to be as humanly still as possible. So the man stayed awake all night, terrified, huddled in the corner, thinking and praying, if I arouse the poisonous snake, I'm gonna meet an early end, I must be still. And as the dawn began to settle in on the cell, the man began to make out the shape of the snake. And he was relieved that he had stayed so still for such a long period of time. But as the light began to fill and began to illuminate the room where he was, it became very evident that this snake that had terrorized him for all of this time was an old rope. There was no snake. There are rooms in our minds, all of us, where we see a snake and it's actually an old rope. And it's real to us. You might need to say to anxiety, uh-uh, you're an old rope. You're an old rope. I'm not doing this anymore. You're an old rope. Say to depression, you're an old rope. I've stayed in the corner way too long with this. You might need to say to fear when it comes, you're an old rope. You've shaped my life for way too long. Let the light of the world, Jesus Christ, shape your thinking. Let the light of the world come into your prison cell that you've lived with all of these years in that room, in that mind of yours. You know the room. We all have them. Let his light come into that room with you. Let Jesus Christ into that place. Let him shine the light on, it's so real, it's a snake. You can't tell me it's not a snake. I can, it's an old rope. That's reality, that's truth. Philippians four, verse seven, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Man, my anxiety's real, I understand that. So is mine. Depression's real, I understand that. Fear is real, worry is real, I understand that. It's not that those things aren't real, they're very real. And the peace of God, which transcends our understanding. There's something transcendent that's possible through Christ. He says he'll guard your hearts and he'll guard your minds in Christ Jesus. God, I'm, it's coming. I feel it, it's coming. Whatever these thoughts, this, uh, Lord, help me. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. I, I, this, this necklace is the, uh, it's a prayer uh, bracelet. And the prayer is the Jesus prayer. You've probably all heard of the Lord's prayer. A lot of people haven't heard of the Jesus prayer. The Jesus prayer is this, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, I'm not a sinner. That's not my identity. We all sin. We all come short of the glory of God. That's not your identity. You don't have to go down that path, but we still sin. He that says he's without sin is a liar. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I pray this Jesus prayer. And sometimes I just say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. What am I doing? I'm filling the room with light. I'm filling that moment with light. I'm changing my thinking in that moment with light. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And it changes my state. It changes my emotions. And it releases faith in my heart. And the first step to accepting the peace, the transcendent peace that Christ offers is in a relationship with him. And it starts with you taking your prideful, haughty thinking that you do not need a savior and you lie it down and go, you know what, that's broken thinking. That's actually broken thinking. Well, if he really needs to do this, no, he doesn't, he's God. Prideful thinking, oh no, I need God. God's gotta do this or that and then I'll, you know, then I'll, you know, he'll be so lucky to have me. Prideful thinking, broken thinking, lay it down. Let Christ in. 
Because what the Spirit is saying, Spirit unto Spirit is, I need a Savior. I need a Lord. I need help. I'm not all that. And I'm more often weaker than I am stronger. And all my man-made-up declarations of positive this and motivational rallies is really just me and my trying and my own strength to get positive enough to go make a difference. And it's artificial. I need the Spirit of God to rise within me in this moment. But at first, I need a Savior to come into my heart. Would you bow your heads with me? And if you wouldn't mind, just to close your eyes, just to create a sacred space for you in this moment. Where are you at with Jesus? Is there something in in your heart that says, I need a Savior? I need forgiveness of my sins. I want to make peace with God. If that's your need here today, I'm not going to have you stand or come forward, but just right where you are, just raise your hand and say, yeah, that's what I need. Just respond. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Go ahead. Just respond to him right where you're at. That's wonderful. I'm going to pray with you, and I'm going to pray for us together. And you can make this your prayer as well. Lord Jesus Christ, I need a Savior. I need you to come and transform my mind and renew my mind, but it begins with changing my heart. I want to have a heart of humility. I want to see my need of you and my dependency upon you. I ask you to save me of all my sins and come into my life. I choose today to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Father, for all my brothers and sisters in in Christ that are discouraged, struggling, so aware of all of our own weaknesses and wondering, have we really changed? Have we really grown? We just invite you into our cell to free us, to bring in the light, to open up the cell door, to let go of the old ropes and the old ways, to see anew that the light of the world would become the light of our minds and the light of our hearts. And then together we would go out into our neighborhoods and our community and we would be that light of hope and that voice of hope to others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms, and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.